already for two full weeks. Those who came for Chamber Fest, week one, and you got the second week coming in. And some of you are leaving at the end of this week, whether you came in today or last week. So I need to know how many of you, and, and I don't want to bring a negative thing right off the bat here tonight, but how many of you will be leaving at the end of this week on, on the next? Wow. Wow. Okay. Commercial. We do have some spaces for week three. If you want to sign up for another week, we've got space for you. Not all of you, but, but, so, but it really feeds into what I want to talk to you about tonight. And I'm talking to you, but I'm also talking to me. Because as many of you know, um, after being actively involved with Chase Summer School of Music for 25 seasons. This is my last season as executive director and Graham Bergen will be stepping into that role uh, starting on August 15th and so God will be using him to direct the ministry. And in the scriptures we're given a number of examples of people who come to the end of a particular part of their journey and they have choices to make as to whether they are going to finish with a whimper or if they are going to finish well. And it's my prayer that those of you who have to leave after this week will finish well this week. It's my prayer that I will finish well as I close out this part of my career with Chehi. And I pray that we will all as believers continue to run the race that God has set before us with great endurance. I've got a story here I want to share with you. <coughs> Pardon me. This occurred very, very recently. In fact, it was on the news just this past week. There was a race in Atlanta. Perhaps if you weren't here in the bubble, you got to see this on the news. And uh, it was quite an interesting situation. Okay. Uh, here's the news report from one of the outlets. Some advice for competitive runners out there. Even if you think you're in first place, don't slow down and definitely don't celebrate before crossing the finish line. Ben Payne says he thought he was a few good steps in front of UK Olympian Scott Overall during Saturday's Peachtree Run 10K race in Atlanta. Moments before the crossing the finish line, Payne slowed down and threw up his hand in celebration. WXIA reports the men's race was so close that it took a photo finish to figure out who won the prestigious race. And it wasn't pain. Race officials declared that overall the winner had a time of 29 minutes and 30 seconds. Pain finished at 29 minutes 30 and 9 one hundredths seconds. That was painful. <laughs> Was that you, Grace? Come, Grace, that was, that was like a Mr. Haynes moment. All right, yes, all right. For those of you who didn't hear, for pain, that was painful, she said. That was good. All right. Overall, told WXIA, I noticed out of the corner of my eye, he had his arm up celebrating just before we got to the line. And you know, as a competitive runner, who gets to that line first? And I knew it was me. Payne told WCVB, I, I, I mean, I, I thought I had a couple of steps on him. He put on a hard surge right the last minute. Tough. He didn't finish strong. He celebrated before he finished. The scriptures give us something about that as well. Not about that particular race in Atlanta. But in Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 1 we read, Therefore, seeing we also are compassed about by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with endurance, with patience, the race that is set before us. You see, when Mr. Payne was running, he didn't have the patience to wait until he crossed the finish line before he started celebrating. And just that little bit of, yes, I am the king of the world, was all it took for Mr. Overall to take over the win. 
Okay. In our Christian life, sometimes we stop to celebrate too soon. In our music life, sometimes we stop to celebrate too soon. Now, as I look in front of me, I see a number of young people who have been told for many years now, you are the best musician in the world. And you are wonderful people and you are good musicians and you are young and you're learning. But the one thing that you will discover, both here at Chehi and throughout life, is that you never completely master that which you're trying to do. When you feel that you have mastered it completely, that's when you go bam and fall flat. In our Christian life, sometimes we think, oh, I have arrived. And when we do that, that's when Satan has a great place to get a hold and to cause us to stumble. You guys that have been here for a couple of weeks, those of you who are here just this week and you're going to be leaving at the end of this week, as you go through the week, one of the things that you'll, you'll tend to do is think about, oh, I've only got three days left, you know, I, and I haven't pranked my counselor. I've got to do something, you know, and, or whatever. But you'll take your eye off of that which is really your goal. Now, while you're here, we have several goals for you as the leaders of this wonderful ministry. Goal number one is that you will leave more motivated and better prepared to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, to reach your world for Him. Another goal is that you will be a better musician than you were when you came in. That you will be better motivated in your practice time. You'll be more diligent in digging through that woodshedding process that your teachers are going to talk about. That, that will become so much a part of you. It's, it's great when I get to travel and, and I visit with people. And I remember uh, a number of years ago, whenever I would go to Rochester, I'd have the privilege of staying in the home of Dr. and Mrs. Schuen. And their children were, uh, some of them were in the home at that time as well. And it, uh, no matter when you go into their home, you're never very far from somebody practicing something musically, okay? And it's a wonderful thing. And it's really neat because even when they're not practicing, they're still learning because they got music playing that's gorgeous music and, and it's just an amazing environment. And I was always so impressed that, you know, the kids had been raised to, to never let anything like a, a trumpet in you know, the next room practicing bother you from getting to sleep. It's what they grew up with. And it's, it was their way of life. And Mrs. Britton is not here tonight because she's taking care of her wonderful little children. But she'll tell you that she learned the art of practicing from watching and listening as mom and dad did that all the time. What a great example. You guys have the opportunity this week to learn from some tremendous teachers musically. And I want you to take full advantage of that. You know, don't miss your lessons. Don't skip out on things. Be diligent when they say, I want you to work on this little piece and, and for a whole practice session, do nothing but this. Do it. They really know what they're talking about and they have your good in mind. They want to see you leave here a better musician. But... The wonderful thing about this place is that each one of them, all of your counselors, all of the staff, all of the faculty members are people who love the Lord and they want to see you walk away from this place better motivated and better equipped to share Jesus Christ with the world. Don't raise your hand in celebration before the race ends. Don't slow down because someone else is gaining on you. Okay, there's a famous quote about that. It's secular, we won't use that, okay? But uh, it's, it's so, so true. When you go home, you haven't arrived. You've reached a stage. It's sort of like running a relay. Any of you here, I know that we have some competitive runners, okay? Morgan, where are you? Where are you? Where are you, Morgan Lewis? Where, 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 where? Oh, I still don't see you. There you are, dear. Okay, I remember when Morgan came to camp last year for the first time. She was insistent, and it was for months before she came. Can I run? Do I get a chance to run? Will somebody get up and run? What do I have to do to be able to run? Okay? It's obvious that is an important part of your life. 
Okay, you got a you got a, a a teammate or somebody that runs in the same club or something over here. Where who is that I met today that runs with you? <laughs> that oh my goodness. Okay, isn't running wonderful? Yeah. Do you ever feel like you've reached the peak? There's always another goal. There's always something more to do. Okay, musically, I'm going to pick on someone that's a great professional musician. Dr. Shute. Okay? Now when Dr. Shute was, well he wasn't a doctor yet, he was just this little bitty guy that came to camp. And we, we went swimming and he looked like a fish in the water. Even then I could see that Benjamin Shute was very competitive. He wanted to be the best at whatever he did. Okay? Now Dr. Shute, you've been studying violin for a few years, right? Yeah, okay. Have you reached the point where you just think, man, I've got it? Absolutely not. In fact, I would venture to say that Dr. Shute, Mr. Raleigh, uh, let's see, Dr. Katz, uh, Dr. Nubro, I didn't see him here tonight, but it, uh, all these people would tell you that the more they study, the more that they gain, the more they realize there's much more to learn than what I've already learned. There's always more. And that's the way it is in our Christian life. Don't ever rest on your laurels. Always strive to finish strong. When do you finish the Christian race? It's, it's not a trick question. You finish the Christian race when you leave this world. And until then, don't raise your hand in victory. Don't say, I've got it made. Don't say, I've won the prize. Paul tells us that we press on toward the prize. And the prize is is an eternity in heaven with Christ. So this week, I want you guys to work hard, study hard, play hard. When it's Frisbee time, play to the very best. When it's time to eat dinner, eat dinner to the very best of your ability. Okay? Because the, the scriptures tell us that whatever we do, whether we eat or drink or whatever, do it as unto the Lord, and he deserves our very, very best. And I can guarantee you one thing. I can't guarantee you what you're going to go home and have, have gained, but I can guarantee you one thing. If you will commit everything that you do to God and say, I'm doing this to the very best of my ability because I'm doing it for God, it will get better. And it will be what God wants. So that's my challenge to me tonight, as I have just a few weeks left in leading this ministry. Finish strong. Don't raise your hand in victory. You're not done. And I challenge you the same way. Father God, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to study here with these incredible musicians and Christians. And I pray that as we go through this week, we would not think we've arrived. That we would rather be humbled and we would say, God, show me what you need me to know. Show me moment by moment, day by day, hour by hour, and help me to learn and move forward. And we're going to give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor for what you accomplish in our lives this week, throughout this summer, and throughout our lives. In the name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.